I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. And now, here's the veteran voice of the legal fix, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Lone Star State in Montgomery County, Texas, for a brand new episode of The Legal Fix, a new age radio show presented by the tough law firm, the toughest law firm in town with the toughest lawyers around, answering your toughest legal questions. Introducing first, hosting out of the red corner, the big deal, Bruce Dawson. Tough, joined by Boy Wonder, Brandon Scott Riley, and super lawyer, G.I. Jerome, the golden boy. Jeremy Lee Hall! Thank you, Bruce Buffer. I'm the eraser, Paula Hughes. The eraser. Here with boy wonder Brandon Riley and super lawyer G.I. Jerome, the golden boy, Jeremy Hall. Call our hotline at 936-900-2381. Today we'll be discussing County Court of Law 1. And in the third segment, after the hot seat, we'll be talking about hot topics in the legal community. But before we get to Brian King, I would like to just give a shout out to Bruce Tuff and the Tuff family. We lost a very important member of the Woodlands community in the greater Montgomery County area. Mr. Colson Tuff passed away yesterday at the ripe age of 95, and he'll be greatly missed. There aren't very many buildings in the Woodlands that don't have his unique signature on them and, and he was one of the chief founders of the woodlands working for the mitchell family so yeah. he'll be greatly missed bruce we love you we miss you and and we wish you well yeah. our condolences mm -hmm. brian good. welcome to the legal fix we're very glad to have you would you please tell us a little bit about yourself oh, i'm happy to be here thank you for having me on so I am running for County Court at Law Number One uh, as the judge of that, of that position. Dennis Watson is the current judge, and he'll be retiring after 24 years at the end of this year. Ooh, yeah, first elected time. in 1998. So I'm running because uh, I want to. De I have dedicated my my life to service, and I want to serve this community. Uh, I could stay at my law firm and continue to build it. I'm enjoying that greatly. I enjoy the camaraderie of my firm, but. Uh, at this point in my life, this is something I felt compelled to do because I want to dedicate my life further to serving the community. That's how, how I know I can do that. One of the reasons, one of the other reasons I'm running is I know that my background has, uh, can show that I have the temperament that you need on the bench. And I'll just run through that quickly. It's not all on my resume. I didn't uh, go to law school directly I, when I was an undergrad at, at the University of Texas. I uh, mentored for about 18 months to becoming a, a, an Episcopal priest. Hmm. And um, when I realized that God had, had different uh, ideas for me, I then continued to look for where I was going to go, and I got a master's in history. I studied uh, mid-20th century movement conservatism. And from there, uh, I again realized that I, I needed to make another change, and then I did eventually go to law school. I went to law school at Seton Hall. It's the only time I've lived out of state. lived in New Jersey for a year, in uh, Manhattan Jersey. for two years. Uh, but I came back as soon as, as as soon as I could, and I began working with uh, re, uh, at the time recently retired prosecutor Mike Griffin in uh, Conroe. And within six months, he made me a partner. And Griffin and Kane is where I'm still at, along with uh, with Mike's uh, son Bob. So we've got three uh, attorneys at this point. We did have four at one point, but uh, it's a growing firm, like I said. Uh, so like if I when I win this position, it's going to be bittersweet. I'm going to have to leave that firm behind. In an official capacity, uh, my name can stay on it, but um, you know, have to do the Chinese wall. It's mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Um, today we actually celebrated Mike Griffin's birthday, and uh, we talked Mike about who I can still come over what, and, what? and do those things from the bench and, and and post on Facebook. You know, all the hey, here's my old firm, here's what's going on. But I won't be able to do anything officially, obviously, and um, you know, that's that's going to be tough. 
as I uh, as I see that the, the firm will continue to grow. I know uh, under with Bob and Mike. And I would love to be a part of that, but I don't feel that that's the, the right path for me, and that's why I'm running for this position. Tell us so, a little bit about the court, that particular court. So county court law number one, uh, at all the uh, forums, everybody's saying, I think at my lead, it's a general jurisdiction court. It is, uh, but it has been determined uh, by the, the judges together uh, that it's a criminal misdemeanor court. Hmm. And it will stay that way unless the community needs it to change, which it very well could. But, we are growing. Right, absolutely. But it, specialization is where we're headed in all the courts, and it is a, it is a criminal misdemeanor court. One of the things that I bring uh, that's different from all the other judges running for things, except for the appellate court judges, I'll we'll leave them out of this, because they are also diverse like, like me. I have a diverse practice. Um, you work at a general litigation firm. I do as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, we don't take anything that comes in the door, but anything that we feel we can handle, we'll take. I do concentrate on criminal defense matters and family matters, but I've also uh, shepherded many probate cases through court, written many wills, uh, handled uh, business transactions, uh, wind, winding down a business right now. Uh, those types of things are things uh, you know, that, that come through our, our office and I handle. And that's a little bit different than most people that run for judge uh, in this county because they are moving towards specialization. And I, I think that background is also another, another reason uh, that I'm running is because I see that we've got all these people that are coming to the court and they just want to do their area and they, they lack a little bit of the diverse background that I think that judges in, in days, uh, days gone by have had, which is, okay, I know what I'm doing in this decision. I know how it's going to make, I know what's going to do to this defendant, you know, in a criminal court as far as the criminal law. But what is it going to do in family law? What's it going to do for them in, in civil law? What's it going to do for them in the rest of their life? And, and having had clients actually had multiple issues in different courts, uh, and lived with it, with with them through those things. I can see all the uh, ancillary effects of one court's decision on a person's life, mm-hmm. and I think that's important for a judge to have. And, and you know, not, specialization has got its, its bonuses too. So you can look at it both ways. But I, I think that what I bring to the table in that diverse background is um, a little bit unique in the in the in the sense of of who is running for these um, these offices today. So you traded one robe for the other. One robe for the other? You mean the, the priestly, the, the, robe. priestly robe. Yeah, yeah. Priestly robe, For the judicial yeah. robe. When yeah. you were at Seton's Hall, did you hit up the Jersey Shore? I have been to the shore a few pumping. times. Did you do the hair stick up? No. The Jersey I, Shore I, I'm spikes? A, I'm, a pretty, uh, I'm a pretty conservative guy when it comes to, uh, well, lots of things. But when it comes to my, uh, my, my beachly attire, I, you know, like sunglasses, about as wild as I'll get. Okay. With your shirt or without? Uh, Shirt's got to come off at the beach. Come on now. <laughs> have you, as a practicing attorney, have you ever had a case against the big deal Bruce Tuff? I have not. I've had some cases with other, um, with other civil lawyers in the area, but we have, I, we have not had. Haven't got head, heads up with Bruce. Head with to with head with, with law firm. Bruce Lucky. Tuff. And we, did you work uh, with the district attorney's office in Montgomery County? I in turn, interned with them before uh, well, in 2008. So it was actually under the previous district attorney. And that changeover probably had a little bit to do with why I ended up where I, where I ended up. If, I think if uh, Mr. McDougal had gotten another term, I'm, I'm fairly certain I would have gone there. Um, that's nothing against Mr. Ligon. I just think that the, the circumstances of it, I, I, that's just kind of, I don't know. It's, it's hard to get into those things in, in retrospective, looking back, well, the decisions you make. But I'll, I'll, I will tell you, uh, I needed to, to get some work right away. Uh, and, and there's a lot of background to why that happened. I was going to stay in New York for a, a couple years and, and then get my, you know, come down and uh, once I found a job down here, uh, you know, jumping off point from something in New Jersey or New York. But my wife, having moved up there in the middle of law school, said, no, 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 we're going back to Texas. And that put me behind, as other lawyers will know, I missed all of the OCI stuff. Mm-hmm. And so once I was behind it, since I had to restart in Texas, it, it sort of put me on a different path. So Mr. Griffin gave me work immediately, and when he said, I'll make you a partner, you know, there were other opportunities coming my way at that point as, as a baby lawyer. Um, but I said, you know what, here's the guy who's taking a chance on me, and he's already seen that, um, that he likes me, and we're working well together. So you know, loyalty is one of my uh, core beliefs. And even though there were some, some other opportunities, people were talking with me, uh, I, I went ahead and, and stayed, and I think that's been the best decision I've made. 
How are that, you going to tie that loyalty aspect of your personality with the need to be objective from the bench? So, obviously, <laughs> yeah, 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 it is a good question. Uh, I've been saying this a lot. Uh, one of the questions we get a lot, how are we going to move dockets faster? Mm -hmm. It's the biggest question that I think that uh, the populace has. Um, and other lawyers have it too. They want, they want their cases done. And the number one thing you have to do is to have the, the fortitude that when your buddy stands in front of you saying, I need a continuance, and you just got to come up with that two-letter two answer. No, no, no. Uh, it's, we're going to have trial Monday. And you that, just don't think so. Nish, nish. Yeah, I, I have a, um, the most adorable five-year-old. I have a nine-year-old, too. But the five-year-old is the one that, you know, she bats her eyes and she wants something. Uh, I've learned to say no in almost probably one of the, the toughest circumstances there is right now. And, and so I know I can do it. And if, it's, if it's somebody that I, you know, go to lunch with regularly as, as an attorney now, if it's somebody from, uh, that comes down here uh, that was a buddy in law school, if it's somebody that's, uh, from my childhood who I, I haven't seen in a long time, uh, it doesn't really matter. The circumstances are, are, are going to be, look at that, you know, is, on every motion for continuance, is it done for delay or is it done that justice, justice be done? Mm -hmm. And you, if it's not, this, the latter. If it's, if it's for delay, well, then no. We're going we're gonna to go forward. So a and, loyalty to the, to the Constitution, huh? Absolutely. Very good. If you can deny your daughter a continuance, you can deny a lawyer friend a continuance. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No more TV shows for you. All right, we're going to take a short break. But when we return, we'll put our guest on the hot seat. Hot seat. A rapid fire cross examination where he'll answer our toughest questions as fast as he can. And we'll also answer your toughest legal questions. So call our hotline at 936 900 2381. <laughs> I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281-681-0808. We're tough for you. Ask for your favorite songs using WhatsApp. The number 936-900-2381. We all want to protect what we love. And we know that child safety seats and seatbelts save lives. Yet three out of four kids aren't buckled in correctly. And in 2016, 42% of Texas teens who died in crashes weren't wearing a seatbelt. Don't be a statistic. If you love it, click it. That includes you too. Buckle up. Every rider, every ride. One final time, here's the veteran voice of the legal fix, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Attorneys are licensed by the State Bar of Texas. Our three lawyers plus examining the witness are Bruce Huff, Brandon Riley, and Jeremy Hall. And when the action begins, the witness on the hot seat will answer as many questions with the fewest words as fast as they can. The Hot Seat is sponsored by The Legal Fix, a new age radio show brought to you by The Tough Law Firm. We're tough for you. And now, for those listening on the radio and Legal Fix fans watching around the world, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live! from the Legal Fix Studios in the Woodlands, Texas. It's time! One lightning round for the undisputed Legal Fix Hot Sheet Championship of the World. Thank you, Bruce. Welcome back to The Legal Fix. I'm the eraser, Paula Hughes. The eraser, I'm the eraser. substitute hosting today for the big deal, Bruce Tuff. I'm here with boy wonder, Brandon Riley, and the golden boy, Jeremy Hall. Call our hotline, 936-900-2381. 
We're Thank here Debbie. with special guest Brian Kane, a candidate for the bench, the Montgomery County Court at Law Number One. Now we're going to put him on the hot seat. Jeremy, My will man. you swear the witness in? Absolutely. Brian Kane, have you seen the hot seat before? I have not. Okay, go ahead and gussy up with those sunglasses there, bub. We are going to ask you a bunch of questions. You're going to serve as the witness in a rapid-fire cross-examination. You're going to answer our toughest questions as fast as you can. You get one free pass. Every subsequent pass results in a 10-second penalty. Thanks to our champ, the eraser, Paula Hughes. She answered one question every two and a half seconds. The average is five. The slowest is 10. State your full name for the record. Brian Russell Kane. Do you swear to tell the truth? The whole truth in your version of the truth to answer the most questions with the least words as fast as you can. I do so swear. He ready. How do you spell Brian Kane? B R I A N C A I N. So, like the inventor of murder, not the walking instrument. Correct. Where is your brother Abel? I'm not his keeper. He gone. He gone. B. Are you related to Abel? No. Louise Kane? Louise Kane, yes. How about Kane West, that guy that got benched for Pete Davidson? No. What Pete. about Kane from WWE? Not that I know of. How does it feel to be associated with the inventor of murder? Sometimes it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you matriculated at the University of Texas in Austin, true? That's right. What was your major? History and religious studies, double mm. major. What was your second favorite religion? Second favorite religion? Second favorite. Buddhism Second was favorite. pretty cool to study. Okay. Uh, how about the worst? Um, like uh, the biggest heathens. Confucianism? Straight to hell. Hmm. Yeah, that's a tough one. Worst religion. Okay. Have you ever played Objection Mortal Kombat? Yeah. <laughs> you have ever I played Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat. Yes, Pretend like there's a, re a religious leader's edition and pick your character. Pick my... Oh, well. Buddha would be pretty cool. Liu Kang. Billy Graham. He I'm did all those crusades. Satan. <laughs> Paula. You almost became an Episcopal priest, yes? That's right. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. And mm -hmm. with you. It, it's, go ahead, Episcopalians Paula, right. are like vegetarians, but they add fish, right? <laughs> yeah, we can eat fish. Or is it no fish? No, it's where you only eat fish. Is that like Methodists or Lutherans? We really don't have any dietary restrictions. Is that like Methodists or Lutherans? Closer to Lutherans, but Methodist is pretty close. That's too. even worse. It's not as bad as Catholics, though. No. Yeah. <laughs> now you're getting criminals off and helping dads avoid child support. Good choice. Good choice. Good. Good. You sing in choir at Trinity Episcopal. Do you ever solo? No. <laughs> Can you make like a cantor and sing sing us a line from the liturgy? The no. Liturgy. Liturgy. Ah, 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 man. It's like the Halo theme song. After UT, you went to Texas State. And your resume notes a 3.67 GPA. Ooh. That's impressive. It's yeah. a 4.0 if you round up. But then at Seton Hall, you plummeted to a 3.1. What happened? Law school stuff, man. That's a total frat move. <laughs> you have a bunch of wicked smart chicks in your classes. Wicked hey, New York. You. New York's got some, you know, you got Broadway. You got, I mean, you got a lot of distractions Distractions. In New York. You also worked for a senator in New Jersey, Robert Menendez, where you researched issues and recommended solutions. solutions. What was your best? What's your best solution? My best solution? Uh, I, I, being in the Republican and a Democrat's office, I recommended that he look into things that Tom DeLay uh, had suggested and uh, got, a, got a weird look. But, you know, I thought, it was a good I thought it was a good solution. Any uh, world Bing. changers or just like Charmin for the bathrooms? Um, <laughs> it, was, it was small stuff. You also liaised with governmental officials, right? Occasionally. And when you liaised, are you laying down or is that like standing up? Some Sounds like both. laying some down, both, some liaise, some of both. Okay. Shout out your kids, names and ages. Abigail's nine, Eleanor's five. Who's your favorite? <laughs> we know no. it's Eleanor based upon what you said earlier, yeah. so it's okay. And who's mom? Catherine. Katie. She likes Katie. I, I call her Catherine. So you do know who the mom is? I, I'm aware, yeah. So she gave a curious speech at Honor Cafe, and, and she led with, I'm not good at public speaking, and then she totally forgot her speech. So the question is, why did you bat her lead off? <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was confident that she had it all down. Were you punishing her for the Beto pick? Yeah. The AKA Robert Francis the, or the Beto the pick. Third? Beethoven, uh, yeah. he realized he needs guns to take our guns, so he's converted to a Republican. That's good. What, why does he sweat so much, though? Yeah. His floppy pelt makes him top heavy. <laughs> he sweats, he needs a mop and bucket. 
Yeah. Speaking of good-natured floppy pelts, you've got a nice hound dog pelt. Have you ever received a permanent? No. What kind of hair product do you use? Whatever's cheapest. Have you ever rocked just a mustache, a little bristle brush? Nope. Street sweeper. Do you wear short shorts to the gym? No. Ever lift? Do you even lift, bro? Yeah. I've got a, a home set. I just haven't been doing it in the last se- several months. Ah, how much do you bench? I've gotten up to 225 at one point. a boy. So, in spirit of the New Jersey, this Halloween, will you go as David Hasselhoff from Baywatch? I, I'll consider you'd be good, it. You'd be a good Hoff. How about Billy Graham? That would be a good one, too. What about Beto? No. <laughs> Do you have a will? I, I've had enough of him. Well, that's for sure. Do you have a will? Do I, I have a will. Prenup? No. How much money to retire? Oh, way more than I have now. Fair What's enough. the most humble job you've ever had? I My first job was at Taco Bell. How, do you, how often do you check social media? Well, since the campaign started every day. Mm-hmm. And what apps do you use? Facebook. And are you posting, commenting, or just trolling? I post. I actually, I think I've made two posts today. Have you cried in the last year? Not audibly. Whoa. Sum up your life philosophy in a word or phrase. A word or phrase? Life Hmm. philosophy. Hmm. I'm a little bit go along to get along at times. Okay. What's one thing people don't know about you that you want them to? Yeah, that one's out of left field. Um, Fun fact about Brian Kane. If I could watch football at any time, I would. Nice. You know what your problem is? No. Okay, just asking. Okay. <laughs> As a private attorney, how many cases have you tried? Yeah, how many criminals have you gotten off? Actually, none have been found not guilty. I've just done better than the wreck. It was what, you know, it's kind of, if it's a felony, that's what you're looking for as a, as a minimum. Uh, a but. But no, 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 not guilty. So, which candidate that. in the primary spends the most time in the mirror? <laughs> I, I'm gonna guess Huffman. Okay, and who's the least? Dan McCon. <laughs> <laughs> What's the meanest thing you've said into a microphone, either in court or on the campaign trail? Into a microphone. Meanest oh well, thing. Um, I accidentally uh, I had a client who was. He was getting in my ear because he screwed up and didn't get all the documents to me. No and context. I, yeah. Just say it. Say the yeah. mean thing. F off. <laughs> <laughs> That's Paula. mean. So judicial fashion is painfully outdated. Would yeah. you agree? Ro- I'm Do sorry? You, judicial judicial fashion. fashion. Painfully oh. outdated. Robes are so last season. If you could give it an update, what would you wear as a judge? Update uh, the robe. I'm a traditionalist. I like it. I'm going with the robe. If you could be anything other than a lawyer or a judge, what would you be? First baseman for the Astros. And a boy. What's your top unchecked bucket list item? Being first baseman for the Astros. <laughs> <laughs> Fastest you've ever gone in a car. One fifteen. Favorite mm-hmm. lawyer movie or show? Oh, my cousin Benny. Come on. Fav- yeah, that's a good one. Favorite place you've ever been? London. Hmm. Paula. What's your favorite? Uh, who's your favorite person in the office? In office. Who's your favorite elected official? Oh, in office. My favorite elected official. I, I like the way that uh, I like the way DeSantis is rolling right now. Santos. And the least favorite? Say it. Well, Who do you can't stand? Say it. Biden. Yeah. Come on. Favorite color? Blue. Number. Six. Food. Pizza. Song. Oh, so many. Probably something from the old ninety seven. Bible verse. I kind of quoted it earlier. I'm, I'm not my brother's keeper, which okay. is actually I was using it in the the opposite of its intention. <laughs> Who's smarter, you or your wife? She is. You or Dennis Watson? Hmm. Dennis Watson's pretty smart, so I, I'm not going to back off that one. You or your opponent? I haven't gotten to know him that well to know how smart he is. He's the, pretty smart, though. The voters will decide. Objection, unresponsive. 100-yard dash, you versus Hayfley. Show the camera your most intimidating hair flip for the pre-race face-off. <laughs> nice. Very intimidating. What's a better pet, a rat or a bat? Bat. Would you rather be stoned to death by Willie Nelson or hung by a jury of your peers? 
Not stoned with, <laughs> not stoned with Willie, stoned by Willie. Love Willie, so anything with Willie is going to be the answer. Rusty nice. Harden or Tony Busby? Oh, man, I've seen Rusty in action. Rusty. Good choice. So why does Deshaun Watson need 40 different masseuses? <laughs> I guess they all hit him in a different way. Yeah. How does the Deshaun Watson saga end? Has he had his last happy ending in Houston? I, well, he might come to town as a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll beat him. Did you love the hot seat? That was fun. Had a boy. Good job, Brian <laughs> Kane. Had a boy. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we will be back for the third segment of the Hot Topics. Hot Topics. I'm Bruce Tuff, principal of the Tuff Law Firm. We are a full service law firm serving the greater Woodlands area and the greater Houston area. Contact us at 281 681 0808. We're tough for you. I'm here for your blood. <laughs> One donation saves three lives to the hero bus. Donation time. Hey, you ready to donate? Oh. Go to YouTube.com on your smartphone, tablet, or PC. Subscribe us on YouTube at Radio The Boss 91.1 FM. Welcome back to the Legal Fix. <laughs> Legal Fix. <laughs> We're here with special guest Brian Kane, candidate for the bench at Montgomery County Court at Law Number One. And now it is time for hot topics. Hot topics. Hot Thank topics. you, Paula. The Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer has announced his retirement, and that gives Biden an opportunity to appoint a new justice. Uh, Breyer was appointed by uh, Bill Clinton in 1994 and had some very notable uh, decisions on abortion, census, copyright. Ice cream flavors. Gerrymandering, voting rights. I mean, he, he definitely impacted the constitutional law of the United States for generations to come. Mm -hmm. So as a liberal justice, he had a very influential uh, piece in the history of legal judicial precedent. Who's going to replace him? I've seen talk of VP Kamala Harris being put in that door to sidestep her from vp on a second ballot they just want to get her out of there i think mm -hmm. but it's looking but for I think a spot th exactly but the primary discussion was that it would be a female minority and so she's mm -hmm. kind of a shoe in for that position it sounds like but i but i don't know that's well, that's, that's just the buzz on the street he's gonna do. right 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 and mm -hmm. in other major news the biden administration has removed its fax mandate so I believe that that was political pressure to avoid uh, any kind of distractions during the midterms. Okay. Since the Supreme Court kind of, each don't think so, nixed it for the time being, they've removed it completely. And I think it is related directly to the midterm and the campaign season that's coming upon them. And then in other, other news, Michael Avignati, attorney for Stormy Daniels, the porn star salacious issue with Donald Trump paying her hush money, has deposed her or cross-examined her or direct examined her i don't recall which it was in his fraud trial so he's on fraud for embezzling client he's on trial for fraud for embezzling client monies and he cross-examined her and he's attempting to defeat her credibility by asking her about her visions of dead people but i'll tell you this a uh, uh, mentor of mine joel gordon told me a lawyer who represents himself has a fool for an attorney True. always always hire another attorney you don't Absolutely. represent yourself yeah. So those are the hottest topics around. Stormy Daniels. Stormy. Man. Brian, tell everyone how they can find you online. Well, the easiest way to find me is to call me on my cell phone, 512-694-0624. Yeah, you're shaking your Whoa. head. Whoa. You know we're live on the air, here. right? <laughs> yeah. Man, oh, we couldn't even get Echo Hudson with that one. Yeah. Gonna, the yeah, bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Direct yeah. line. BrianKane.org, B-R-I-A-N-C-A-I-N.org. And uh, my brother, uh, you Keeper. can email me as well at b r i a n c a i n two zero two two at gmail. How about TikTok? Are you on social media? Mm, on Facebook, you can look, look 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 me up on Facebook. Just my name or Brian Kane for Judge. And you'll find it. 
Very good. Very and good. how do you spell Brian Kane? <laughs> B-R-I-A-N-C-A-I-N. That is, uh, I get Brian Kane a lot, so I, I have to make sure that I spell the whole thing. Brian without a Y. You got to tell him to buy an, a vowel, huh? Yep. <laughs> Thank you so Very much. Good. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Well, I appreciate yes, you having us. Good luck in your race. Thank you. Yeah, best Very of luck. Good. All right, take us out, be dev I'm the eraser, Paula Hughes, with Boy Wonder, Brandon Riley, and super lawyer G.I. Jerome, the golden boy, Jeremy Hall. We'll Thank see you. you next week for another episode of The Legal Fix. You can watch Legal past Fix. episodes and highlights at toughlawfirm.net slash The Legal Fix. And for the latest, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And tune in to 91.1 FM, The Boss, the Fridays boss. at noon. Fridays at noon. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to call our office if you need anything. 281-681-0808. See you next week. <laughs>